Have you ever wondered why a PET scan is always paired with a CT scan? On its own, PET scan shows hotspots of metabolic activity, but it doesn't tell you what these hotspots are, or exactly where in the body they're located. Now overlay a CT scan, and suddenly you get a detailed anatomical map showing the body's structure and the exact source of that activity, so you can see the organs work in almost real time. But that's not the only reason PET scans and CT scans make the perfect diagnostic duo. How does a PET scanner work? A PET scanner works by detecting tiny bursts of gamma rays emitted by a radioactive tracer that's injected into the patient. In the case of the most widely used PET contrast agent, fluorodeoxyglucose, or FDG, the tracer is a specially designed sugar molecule found with a small amount of radioactive fluorine 18. Because it behaves almost like normal glucose, it's absorbed by cells that use a lot of energy. This makes organs like the brain, heart, and some types of cancers glow under a PET scan. Once inside the body, the fluorine 18 decays by emitting a positron. This is the antimatter counterpart to the electron. When that positron encounters an electron, they annihilate each other, releasing two gamma photons that fly off in almost exactly opposite directions, about 180 degrees apart. In terms of PET imaging, this is called a coincidence. By recording millions of these coincidence events and converting them into electrical signals, the PET detector ring provides the data to reconstruct a 3D heat map showing metabolic activity. In reality, PET scanners only detect a tiny fraction of the total possible signal because most of the annihilation photons never actually hit the detector. Most fly off in other directions and are essentially lost, which is why detectors have to be fine-tuned not only for sensitivity, but for coincidence detection, down to a billionth of a second. The image created by a PET scanner is a glowing map of metabolic activity. But there's a catch. It doesn't show exactly where the activity is happening. Without anatomical reference, it's just a blur of bright spots. Du -du -du -du. That's where CT comes in. CT uses x-rays to build a precise 3D map of your bones, organs, and tissue with two known points between a CT and a PET scanner, the two images can be overlaid to show both the metabolic activity and the exact spot in the organs that are creating those hotspots. Now doctors can tell whether the bright signal is lung cancer or just your heart doing its job. But there's also another reason PET is most often paired with CT. It helps correct the PET scan data to make it sharper and more vivid. See, as photons travel through your bones, organs, and tissue, some of the photons are absorbed. When it comes to PET CT systems, the CT has already passed photons through the body and can provide an up to date map of actual tissue densities. The CT data map is used to calculate how much gamma photon attenuation occurs in each tissue. This results in more accurate attenuation correction, and as a result, the PET images are sharper, quantitatively precise, and more reliable. PET scanners can also be paired with MRI but this pairing doesn't have the added advantage of directly measuring tissue electron density. Instead, PET-MR estimates attenuation coefficients for each tissue type. Without CT's attenuation correction, PET scans would be blurrier and less accurate. That's why in modern medicine, PET scanners never work alone. PET tells you what's happening, and CT tells you exactly where it's happening.